Hello everyone. Welcome to Literary Animator, a place where you study, we animate. Before we start the poem, we will have a brief discussion about the poet. Nissim Ezekiel was born in Mumbai in a Jewish family. He is a well-known post-colonial figure in Indian English literature. Many critics consider him the father of modern Indian English poetry. He was a poet, actor, playwright, editor, and art critic. He received the Sahitya Akademi Award in 1983 and the coveted Padmashri Award in 1988. The poem Enterprise was released in 1960 as part of his poetry collection The Unfinished Man. The poem is a metaphor for man's never-ending search for purpose and fulfillment. Nissim Ezekiel's Enterprise follows a specific structure and rhyme scheme. The poet himself is the sole speaker in the poem, so readers can say it is a lyric poem. In some instances, the poet uses a first-person narrative to depict the journey. The poem is 30 lines long. The poem consists of six stanzas, each of which contains five lines. The rhyme structure is ABBA, and it repeats throughout the poem without interruption. Let's move on to the line-by-line -line explanation of the poem. It started as a pilgrimage, exalting minds and making all. The burdens light, the second stage, explored but did not test the call. The sun beat down to match our rage. In the first stanza of Enterprise, Nissim Ezekiel describes the journey as a pilgrimage. At the beginning of the journey, the poet's mind was high, and the burdens of his existence seemed insignificant and in contrast to his endeavor. The poet had various difficulties during the second stage of the journey, but he was not in the mood to abandon the journey halfway through. We stood it very well, I thought. Observed and put down copious notes. On things the peasants sold and bought. The way of serpents and of goats. Three cities where a sage had taught. The author states clearly in the second stanza that he was not traveling alone. He was in a group of people who all had the same goal in mind. Throughout the tour, the poet wrote vivid notes about his surroundings. He encountered several people along the route, and he specifically cites a sage whom he observed teaching his lectures in three places. After reading this stanza, it is evident that the poet was more focused on his surroundings than on his goal. But when the differences arose on how to cross a desert patch, we lost a friend whose stylish prose was quite the best of all our batch. A shadow falls on us and grows. Later in their venture, there were some disagreements among the team members on how to cross a desert patch. The matter was meaningless, yet it caused one of the group's intellectuals to abandon the journey. The poet claims that the individual was excellent in prose writing and was the best among the group. Another phase was reached when we were twice attacked and lost our way. A section claimed its liberty. To leave the group, I tried to pray. Our leader said he smelt the sea. The poet and his group faced some difficulties along the route. They encountered obstacles twice. They were ambushed twice during the following stage of their journey and lost their way. Some members of the group became so devastated that they couldn't continue the voyage and left. In such a situation, the poet turned to prayer to find some hope. We noticed nothing as we went. A straggling crowd of little hope. Ignoring what the thunder meant. Deprived of common needs like soap. Some were broken, some merely bent. Enjambment is used between stanzas 4 and 5. To get the whole meaning, readers must begin with the last line of the previous stanza. In this verse, the poet states that the group's commander had received a tip about their location, 
which was near the sea. They didn't locate anything like it on their journey. It deepened the poet's frustration, leaving him with only a ray of hope. During their voyage, they were unable to meet their basic needs. The poet ironically says that they were deprived of common needs like soap. When, finally, we reached the place, we hardly know why we were there. The trip had darkened every face. Our deeds were neither great nor rare. Home is where we have to gather grace. Lastly, when they arrived in their broken and bent state, they were dissatisfied. The long and exhausting voyage appeared meaningless. They realized that their achievement was neither great nor rare. Ezekiel concludes the poem with the sardonic statement, Home is where we have to gather grace. And the poem ends here. I hope you all liked my explanation and sorry for my absence. We will meet in the next video.